So we're going to uh, talk now a little bit about the Gospel of Matthew. So first of all, we um, need to kind of define what a gospel is. So the literary form of our gospels are akin to something uh, in ancient times are known as a bioe or a lives. And usually these lives or bios are written about specific individuals. Most of the time they're usually written about uh, heroic individuals. Uh, rarely does someone uh, write a bio of a villain. Uh, there are a few occasions in which lives are written about emperors, and sometimes these emperors are not uh, good characters. Um, but most of the time they are written about a, a positive person, a philosopher, or uh, an important person. And um, in this, the authors are usually trying to stress the qualities of that person and why this person is worthy of admiration, they're worthy of praise, they're worthy of honor, they should be looked up to, their, their behavior should be seen as an example for others. So uh, Gospels are not uh, in the strict sense like a modern biography. Usually if you go and pick up a a, a book and it's a biography, there are certain expectations that you have a biography, there are certain uh, expectations about uh, exact quotations, uh, about cro uh, chronological correctness, um, and uh, but those kinds of expectations should be placed upon a bioi. Bioi's are are written to fulfill a particular agenda, um, so that the reader will come to have the same view um, of respect for the main character as the author does. And that would be the case with our, our Gospels. They all um, uh, worship Jesus, they um, admire Him, they uh, respect Him, uh, they would confess Him as Lord, and uh, they believe that He uh, sent by God, that uh, He is fulfilling out God's purposes, and uh, that, he, that people should be disciples of His. And so they're going to tell the story in such a way so that the reader uh, or the audience who hears the story will arrive at the same conclusion. And if that means that they have to uh, rearrange events, uh, they can do that. If they need to paraphrase something that a person said, uh, if they need to uh, amend it, they, if they need to, um, in a sense, um, express it in ways that would be meaningful to the reader, then they can do that. So it's not... Um, following the same kind of rules like a modern biography uh, might have to follow. They are called Gospels uh, because first of all Mark identifies his work as such. So you open up the Gospel of Mark 1-1 uh, and we see the beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. And so um, because Mark started that way, the, um, kind of the church fathers, church tradition identified all the um, um, stories about Jesus that were similar to Mark, uh, they are called Gospels. The, the word Gospel is a somewhat a secular term, it's a political term. Um, we typically tend to use it today to refer to something religious or something truthful that's religious. And uh, But back then, uh, in the ancient time, it was just used to announce uh, something good, sometimes um, the uh, victory of a general or an emperor uh, or the birth of a son, uh, something that would be good news for the empire. And so here what we, we have is the good victorious news that really originates with Jesus' teaching um, and uh, originates with his death and his resurrection. So what Jesus uh, uh, taught about what God was doing uh, through him and what Jesus' death and resurrection does uh, is good news for the world. And so our Gospels are telling a story um, for their audiences, uh, which they should be receiving as good news about what God uh, is doing, how God, in a sense, exerting his kingship uh, through Jesus Christ. Uh, the story of, um, just briefly, the story of Matthew's Gospel uh, you say, I have the story of, and that is the story behind Matthew's gospel. Uh, most likely, he was a Jewish Christian. Um, there are different theories about where he lived, but 
um, very likely a Syrian of Antioch. And the reason why we think that is we know of other early Christian writings that come from uh, Antioch in Syria, and they seem to know Matthew's gospel um, more than the other gospels. And so that may suggest that this gospel was in circulation in the area of Antioch. So uh, it was composed um, possibly, through, though not certain, sometime uh, either prior to the destruction of Jerusalem, or we might even say sometime right after it. Uh, some uh, scholars think that there are hints in the a gospel that indicates the author himself knows of the destruction of the Jerusalem temple. But others um, have contested that the what are sometimes pointed as evidence could be read in a different way and does not presuppose that the temple has already been destroyed and the author knows it and the author is putting that information into his account of Jesus. And uh, this gospel is to, uh, in order to reassure Jewish Christians, it's primarily Jesus is seen very much within a Jewish context. A lot of the things that have to be explained in Mark's gospel um, for a non-Jewish audience are, don't have to be explained in this gospel. And what began to happen, particularly after AD 70, though there probably was some of this even before, but particularly, particularly after, is there began the separation from the synagogues of um, the synagogues of non-Christian Jews, um, and where anyone who was coming to a synagogue service or identifying themselves as a Jew and believed that Jesus was the Messiah was ostracized, was put out, was um, somebody who um, you know was seen as not being a good Jew or could possibly be seen as dangerous to the community in some way because of this particular belief. Prior to AD 70, there was a great deal of diversity uh, amongst Jews about uh, what things could be believed, and so people could be a Jew and could uh, believe lots of different ideas and have uh, various different practices. But particularly after AD 70, it became harder as um, the um, scribes, the rabbis, try to define more clearly what is a good Jew and started to uh, mark out behaviors that were no longer going to be approved at the synagogue level. Uh, it does build upon a version of Mark's gospel. I say a, ver a version of Mark's gospel. It's not clear that m uh, when Matthew writes his gospel that he has our gospel. Uh, he may have something of a shorter version of Mark's gospel. Um, but most scholars recognize that Matthew has something of our Mark. There are a few scholars that think, no, Matthew was written first, that that was the view of the early church, is that Matthew was written first and that Mark abridged it. Mark um, had Matthew and made a shorter version. But today's um, theory uh, about the origin of Matthew's gospel um, tends to uh, focus on Matthew having Mark and then expanding Mark's with it, his own material that he has. And some may wonder, where does Matthew get his material? Uh, and so some of this material may have been in written form, uh, or some of this may be just oral tradition. And so it's not very clear the source of, of that. But uh, he's got Mark. Mark uh, provides the structure. Almost, you know, 90% of Mark's gospel is in Matthew's gospel. And there's a great deal of literary dependency that we see going on. In other words, there is exact wording in, in, in the uh, exact sequencing. And so uh, that suggests this, this dependency. And uh, so it's tr the author wants his readers to live as righteous disciples of Jesus. Um, they... Um, the idea of righteousness is very important. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Um, the righteousness of Jesus' disciples is going to exceed that of the scribes and the Pharisees. Um, but Jesus' disciples are going to be practicing mercy. Um, they're going to practice forgiveness. Um, they're not going to retaliate violently against those who mistreat them. They're going to love their enemies. Um, and so... Um, Matthew's gospel is about trying to be faithful to the law as Jesus interpreted that law 
and uh, then to spread that message out uh, to others, uh, maybe even to Gentiles, uh, that they are welcome to come and um, uh, follow Jesus as the Messiah and to recognize his kingdom. So that's a little bit about the story of Matthew's Gospel.